Hey, it's Joseph here. This video is sponsored by Enscape. By the time this video is published, Enscape would have released the version 2.7. So I wanted to kind of introduce all of the features in 2.7 so that you guys are aware what's going on with the updated Enscape. I usually am quite excited about trying new things and getting my hands on new stuff before everything gets published. And also, I'm also excited about this new release of Enscape 2.7. And by the looks of it, Enscape seems to have included quite a new features inside of version 2.7 so let's have a look first of all let's go ahead and start Enscape if you don't actually see on-screen help at the bottom of your screen you can hit H to see it and as you do so you'll see the two new icons that shows up on the top right hand corner and this one will say fly mode and you can also hit spacebar to enable walk mode versus the fly mode and then you can also click on this icon to toggle between two on the fly mode you'll be able to elevate from the ground plane whereas on the walk mode you'll be able to basically have gravity so that you kind of go up and down of curb or staircases that you have inside of your model and you'll be able to basically toggle between two and also the other one will say perspective and if you click on this icon here you will see three icons that show up one of them will be identical to what you already have so perspective two point perspective and then orthographic so you can click on two point making sure all the receding lines are two point perspective and also orthographic based basically means that you can have ISO or some people might refer to it as sort of exonometric so you can also have that and this is going to be useful when you're trying to do a diagrammatic type of view or illustrated rendering I can also type in 84562 on the keypad to just kind of default back to a certain type of view so for example I can go to plan view and then basically have a look at the plan view of my model and as you can see here I can even do the section and basically look at the cut plane of the section as well and if I were to cut a section as a plan view and basically cut a section like so and you can see that everything has been cut so this feature will become really useful when you're trying to do illustrative plan or section or whenever you are required to do the orthographic type of view previously I used to just trick SketchUp and then and change my field of view as one in order to get this sort of orthographic type of view but I no longer have to do that since this feature is now built in as I often use Enscape for live presentation to showcase my work or the designs that my team has done there were numerous times where I needed to show the info of the geometry they are looking at and basically this feature just does that let's go ahead and open up Enscape Enscape on the Revit side. At the bottom of your view you will see the BIM and that is for BIM mode and you can hit B for BIM mode and as soon as you do that there's going to be additional dialogue that shows up on your left and as well you can just kind of click on the elements inside of your view and the information on those elements will be shown on the left side and as I click on the element it will not only show the parameters of those elements but also their sizes location and brand price and etc and also this kind of works in reverse where you can just highlight the elements inside of the list and those will be highlighted inside of your view so for example I can just click on this chair and then those will be highlighted and I can pick out which one exactly and I can see all of these information of names and the material and the type and the face as well for those of you who use Enscape primarily for Revit and ArchiCAD will be able to appreciate this feature as it will enhance your live presentations unfortunately for those of you who use SketchUp in Rhino only wouldn't be able to benefit from this feature as they lack the BIM information 
to utilize. And inside of Enscape version 2.7, as you try to render the scene, you'll see additional dialogue showing up. So as you click on this button right here, render image, and render image dialog will pop up and you can see select all CAD views versus just select favorites. So for example, I have this view here, that view, that view, just select all of it. Or if you have set it up as favorite views, so for example, if I had these views selected as favorites, then as I try to render, I can select all the CAD views versus just select the favorites and it will be able to select those on the fly. Or I can just click on these things by holding down the control key or the shift button as well. And if I want to render those, I can just click on render and those two views will be rendered without having to shift around between two views. So if you have multiple views that are set up inside of your model, you can just make all of them favorites. Or if you don't want to do that, you can just select all of those views at the same time and just hit render and then Enscape will go ahead and render all of those views for you. Very convenient. I mean, we all knew Enscape is fast at rendering, but now you can just hit render button once and then go make yourself a coffee and all of your views will be rendered and ready to go. However, if you don't want to see these dialogues all the time, then you can also go to general settings, input and under key bindings, for screenshot hotkey, you can set up short key, hotkey, whatever you call it, and set it up in here. In my case, I favor Shift F11 as it has been the default shortcut for rendering. So I just use that key. As soon as you just kind of set up your view and then hit Shift 11, it will be able to just render the image on the go. That way you don't have to set up things in prior if you're just trying to snap away your views. And moving on to the next feature, which is basically basically a lot of assets added to the asset library. Enscape is always adding more assets to their library, so it is good to keep an eye on their list. In fact, just go down to their forum and suggest type of assets that you would like them to include, perhaps different type of people, different type of furniture. There's gonna be variety of things that people need in their own workflow, so it is important for you to get involved in that process so that you can have the assets that you would like inside of Enscape. And I always found the forum to be very informative and useful. They're quick to respond. So just be sure to be down there and asking away the questions that you would like to be answered. I just thought I would mention, I'll leave a link in the description for you guys to follow onto their forum and back onto the asset library. The two new categories of assets that are added to the library are lamps and the buildings. So these lamps are really Really useful in helping the scene look more realistic and just adding more warmth to the scene and there's quite a few of them in there and also the buildings have been added to the asset library and as you have designed your project things are gonna look great but the adjacent site can be quite bare at times so what I usually do is just kind of block out my buildings and these sort of boxes around the building kind of give you an idea of what those buildings on the surrounds would be however they have added more realistic type of buildings so that's how they look inside of SketchUp and then if I go to rendered scene they will look this way So you can have all of those site buildings around your project without having to spend a lot of time trying to have them modeled. And all of those buildings and lamps will be available for you to just choose from asset library and put down on your models. And as I dial in some depth of field effect for the background buildings, my view will look great as they kind of fade away into the background. It seems that Enscape is going international. And what I mean is they now have a German version of Enscape as they are a German company. It kind of makes sense for them to do that first, but I've also heard that they're developing other languages as well. And aside from these highlighted feature, there are other small improvements. Improved asset placing in Rhino and ARCHICAD 23 support. Improved clouds and atmospheric effects, along with reproducible 
renderings, and improved area lights, including spheres, lines, and rectangle lights, improved shading of transparent areas such as curtains and texture cutouts on the alpha maps. I hope everyone enjoys the new version as much as I do. If you have enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe to my channel for content like this. And thank you so much for watching. As always, I'll see you next time. Bye.